Let's take a look at the clinical anatomy of the knee. Before we begin, we'll grab some sheets of paper, a pencil, and some colored pencils, and we'll draw out the diagrams for the knee. Here we'll draw the anterior view of the right knee. The knee joint is made up of three bones. We'll draw the femur, the tibia, and the patella. We'll draw these two side swellings of the femur, which are the lateral condyle and the medial condyle. With these two, you can understand the orientation. In this junction, the fibula, drawn here, does not make up the knee joint, but it does directly articulate with the tibia. The tibia has a tibial tuberosity, which clinically gets inflamed and is referred to as Osgood Schlatter disease. We'll see now in the right knee, here between the joints are fibrocartilaginous structures called menisci. There's a medial meniscus and a lateral meniscus. They are shock absorbers and they help stabilize the joints. They also have a role in distribution of synovial fluid. The knee joint is further stabilized by ligaments, the lateral collateral over here and the medial collateral ligament here. Next, let's draw in the quadricep tendon, which is attached and overlies the patella bone and forms the patellar ligament. The patellar bone has a patellar ligament, which runs and attaches to the tibial tuberosity, which gets inflamed and has microovulsions, which is key to noticing Osgood Schlatter disease. Now let's draw the side view and introduce the bursae. Bursas are fluid-filled sacs which help reduce friction. Here we'll draw the femur, tibia, and patella. The meniscus are here between the joints, and the quadriceps tendon comes down over and encapsulates the patella bone and forms the patellar ligament. It joins onto the tibial tuberosity. Let's draw in the many bursae. The suprapatellar bursa found above, which is supra of the patella, Pre-patella bursa found on top of the patella bone, located just below the tendons in the skin. Then you have the infrapatella bursa, which is below the patella. The infrapatella bursa has a superficial component and a deep component. Clinically, the bursae get inflamed because of irritation of skin and bone from overuse and friction. So you see this in the pre-patella bursa and is known as the housemaid's knee. So just think of a housemaid cleaning the floor on her knees. The infrapatella bursa can also get inflamed. This is known as clergyman bursitis, and it occurs because of the same reasoning. This can be found in religious people praying on their knees. Let's draw the right knee joint, but this time we'll draw it flexed. Here we'll draw the femur, and then the patella on top because of flexion. Here are the medial and the lateral menisci, and interiorly is the transverse ligament joining the menisci. Inside the knee joint, we have two important ligaments, the anterior cruciate ligament, ACL, drawn here, and posterior cruciate ligament, PCL. They are named based on where they are attached onto the tibial bone. The ACL ligament runs on the back of the femur and attaches to the front of the tibia. Hence, we say anterior because it's in front of the tibia. ACL prevents the tibia from sliding out in front of the femur. Clinically, we'll use the anterior drawer test to test the integrity of the ACL. The PCL runs to the back of the tibia, to the posterior of the tibia. Hence, we say posterior cruciate ligament. The PCL prevents the tibia from going behind the femur, and its integrity is examined by the posterior drawer test. Now, looking from the back, we can draw and see it differently. Here we drew the tibia, the fibula, and the intercondylar notch, or otherwise known as the femoral notch. Here in blue is the lateral and medial meniscus. Use the menisci to orient yourself. From posterior part of the lateral meniscus, we have the posterior meniscal femoral ligament, a ligament which is known as having a secondary effect on the posterior cruciate ligament. Here is the PCL, which comes and travels from the medial femur to the posterior lateral part of the tibia. The ACL comes from the lateral part of the femur and travels anteromedially to the tibia. 
Not only should you remember that the ACL and the PCL are named because of where they are attached to the tibial bone, but also remember the direction that they travel. We can remember the direction by the acronym LAMP. L as in lateral and A as in ACL moves medially. M as in medial and P as in PCL moves laterally. We'll draw the femur, patella, tibia, and fibula again. And let's illustrate the medial and lateral collateral ligaments, and also the transverse ligament. We'll draw an important structure located at the anterior medial part of the tibia. This is the pes anserine. The pes anserine are three tendons of muscles, semitendinosus, gracilis, and sartorius. Behind these tendons is the pes anserine bursa. A great way to remember this is by the mnemonic sergeant, S for sartorius, G for gracilis, and T for semitendinosus. You can also remember there's a graceful lady between two sergeants. Clinically and quite commonly, there is pes anserine tendinopathy, or bursitis, which results in the irritation of the pes anserine tendons. Medial knee pain is felt when climbing stairs and when contracting your hamstring against resistance. Our last structure to mention is the iliotibial band, which runs laterally over the lateral condyle and attaches to the anterior lateral part of the tibia. The iliotibial band or ITB can get irritated with friction at the point where it runs over the lateral condyle of the femur. This is known as the iliotibial band syndrome which is a common overuse injury seen in runners and cyclists. ITBS causes a sharp pain at the lateral condyle when a person squats at 45 degrees, such as when bending and when flexing. Thank you for watching and come join us again when we take a look at the back of the knee, the popliteal fossa.